Hey guys and welcome to another MDO Compositions tutorial. This is the 14th tutorial in the first steps and preparation series and today we're going to look at the, the remaining two um, settings in the world options, okay? So it's mist and stars. And in order to demonstrate them um, effectively, let's just set up a simple scene here with shift A and a plane, which is like kind of the ground. And then let's just select this cube Go to edit mode, let's select the top four vertices, let's just move them up so we can we actually create something similar to like a skyscraper or something. Um, yeah, let's just move that one down again. And let's just move one over there and one over there. It doesn't really matter all that much, it's just important to then present to you the mist feature, okay? Let's just make them not all quite the same height. Okay, something like that. Just take our camera, actually. Um, okay, camera, let's just move it forward a little bit. Something like that isn't too bad. Okay, now right now if we render this, you get this effect, which is not very cool. So let's take our lamp, let's add a sun lamp. Somewhat like that. Um, let's also make sure that we've got um, ray shadows enabled. And then let's just also enable environment lighting just so we get a somewhat useful... Yeah, it doesn't look good at all. Um, one last thing to make it look less miniature would be to um, create a soft size here. So let's just put the samples to 4 and the size to let's say 5 okay so not enough 20 okay something like this it, it looks doesn't look very good but it doesn't really have to and one last thing is just that this doesn't really serve well for the purpose we also have to have a few of them in the foreground something like that Okay, let's just move that down a little bit as well. Okay, that's much. Now let's also just move one into the middle here. Perfect. Now, if we render this, we get this result. Also, I don't like the background, so let's just real quick check, select our sun lamp. Let's go to sky and yeah, that's perfect. Here we go. Okay, now right now we've got like no mist at all. Everything looks very, very clear. Of course, we got all this noise from the low samples, but that is okay. Now, if you want to set up the mist feature, it's quite simple actually. You just check mist. And one thing we're going to do right now is we select our camera. Then we go to the um, camera properties over here. And under depth of field, we're not going to cover that today, but just um, set a distance to let's say 10. Okay, and also let's check out the limits here. And you can see now, um, that's the point that would be in focus if we would use depth of field, but that's not my point. My point is that this distance is like 10 blender units, okay? And if we now go to the, um, to the world settings, you can see under mist, let's just minimize those other tabs. We don't need them. Under mist, we have a minimum, which is the overall minimum intensity of the mist. Then we've got like depth, which is the amount of um, distance it uses to actually for the effect to fade in until we have like the maximum um, mist effect. Then we've got the start, where where the fade in starts, which would be around here right now because it's five planar units and we set this marker to ten. And then we've got like height, which is kind of like um, yeah, how high up the um, the mist reaches, okay? And then we've also got the fall off of the mist, okay? So right now, if we go to zero, and if we render this, you can see that's the effect, okay? And um, yeah, we've got a few issues here already. Uh, actually, let's do one thing. 
let's um, go to our land properties. Let's uncheck sky and let's instead just go to over here. Let's just underworld change the horizon color to something like this. Okay, maybe that looks look better. Okay, it looks much better. And now it actually looks as if there is mist there, okay? The further away from the camera, the stronger the mist is, just as in real life. And now if we go to... Um, wrong properties panel. If we change, like, for example, depth to, let's say, 5, then that just means that um, the mist starts around here, and here it already reached full intensity, okay? So now you can see, you can see nothing at all, because even the objects quite close to you are completely covered with mist. Okay, so let's set that back to, let's say, 25, and now let's just set the start to, let's say, 20. Okay, so now up to here we have no mist at all, and then between here and here the mist increases, and then from here on we have no mist, uh, we have 100% mist. Now it looks something like this. Okay, um, so you can see some of the skyscrapers or whatever they're supposed to be in the back are no longer visible. And then about the height, let's just set it back to 5 of 12. Oh yeah, and um, also about, let's set it to 50. Also about the minimum. Um, that's not, that's too far. 30. About the minimum, if we set that to, let's say, f let me just see something. Okay, from 0 to 1, if we set it to, let's say, to 1, we have once again the problem that everything is completely covered. If we set it to point 0.2, then you can see even the objects up close are already covered with mist because um, everything is covered with 20% mist right now, okay? Let's put it back to zero. Um, okay, and now the height. Right now the height is at zero. You can put that to up to like 100 or whatever you want. And yeah, this just controls how much the density decreases with the height. Right now it's with, with a zero. That means no it doesn't decrease at all. If we put it to, let's say, 5, I'm not quite sure how it will behave in this scene, you can see we only have missed, um, um, yeah, towards the, the, towards the floor, okay? And the further up it goes, the less uh, mist we have. Now, if we, if we ch change that to, let's say, 0.5, you can see we've got even less mist, okay? And this is a bit weird because with zero, we have like 100% mist. And that's just because with a zero, this function is not considered at all. And then the more, the, the more, and after that, the higher the number, the more mist. So if we set it to, let's say, 20, you can see we have mist all the way up to here. And yeah, that's just a way to play with that. And you can see it looks quite realistic, the way we have this mist set up. But there's one problem. And I already showed you that more or less with the previous sky setup. But if now we go to environment textures plus, and we set the texture as shown in the previous tutorial to horizon, then this will actually influence the color of the horizon. Then you can see it looks horrible. Now, if we set this to, let's say, something smaller to, let's say, 0 0.05, that's what we get. And that's not what we want because. Um, the texture is actually supposed to influence uh, like the background and the mist is supposed to have like one uniform color and not this kind of weird um, um, cloud c texturing thing going on. And the reason for that is that um, with this mist feature, what Blender does, it does not at all um, create mist actually or create like a, I don't know, a cloud material in front of everything, but it just makes the objects transparent. And that is a problem. Now, as you can see here, if you have like a background image, the mist feature doesn't work at all. Um, yeah, now in order to um, use it anyway, you need the compositor because you can, under the render settings, under render layers, you can actually um, exclude the mist pass or um, not exclude, but you can actually um, make it so that Blender gives you a separate mist pass, okay? And then you can use that mist pass to actually achieve what you want. And yeah, you need to do it with that, and then in the compositor you can actually add it onto everything else. Um, but we're not gonna do that just now because it would be silly to show you just that in the compositor without talking about the, the rest of the compositor, and we will talk about it in a few tutorials, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Compositor is amazing, 
and yeah just note that if you have like no background texture it is perfectly reasonable to use the mist feature as we know by now um, if you have a background color it unfortunately doesn't work at all unless of course you're going for this kind of effect where certain parts of your scene are like um yeah transparent okay so um the last thing we have here let's just delete this texture the last thing we have here is the um, fall off then we have the add quadratic you can also go to inverse quadratic which looks then something like this you just have much more mist now or to linear which is somewhere in between i believe yeah usually quadratic is quite fine um linear works as well i mean yeah just play around with them i'm not quite sure which one's supposed to give you the most realistic result but uh yeah, it's just that uh, quadratic is like the the, the, the strongest falloff and inverse quadratic is like the yeah, the the, the least the, the weakest falloff so to say. Okay, so that's it for the mist feature. Now we're coming to the stars feature. Okay, and um in order to show you that, let me just see. Yeah, we can go with this with this scene. Let's uncheck mist. Um and let's go to stars. You can already see as soon as you check them, those stars appear but only in camera view. If you're outside of camera view, you cannot see anything. If you're in camera view, you can see the stars being displayed. Um, and if we render this, we can see that's what it looks like. Now, obviously, since this is supposed to be a night sky, we need to change the color all the way down to, let's say, like this. Yeah, that's better. And um, you can see those stars have a few issues. First of all, they're way too big. Second of all, they are by far not enough. They, they need, it needs way more. And third of all, they all have the exact same color. Okay, so let's change that. Um, in the viewport, you cannot see the size change, okay? But let's change the size to, let's say, 0.5. Then the minimum distance has to be um, somewhat higher than zero. And the reason for that is that if it is like zero, then it's possible that stars appear over here as well because stars are not like mapped onto the background but they're actually objects in 3d space and if they can be anywhere they can also be in front of certain objects and you do not want a star in front of a skyscraper okay because stars are not in front of a skyscraper obviously so change that to something bigger than that and if you can see this is 10 20 30 40 it needs to be at least a, a further away than 40, so let's go with 100, actually, doesn't really matter. And then we can also change the colors. This just um, gives every star like a different hue. Um, hue is kind of like a color variation, so let's go with... Let me see what you can do there. 0 to 1, let's go with 0.2. And then we can come to 0, you can see that's what it looks like. And it's, they're still too far apart, so let's also show you something else. You can... The further away you go with your camera, um, the stars kind of move move along with it, okay? That's also important. And now if we decrease the separation, you can see more and more stars um, appear, okay? And something like this seems to be all right. Like this maybe. And now if we have 12, you can't see any stars. Uh, maybe the scale is too small. Give me just a second here. Oh, I know what the problem is. Uh, the problem is that right now our camera renders things within 100 blender units and our stars start after 100 blender units therefore we have to increase that to, let's say 500 okay and now um, i screwed up a little bit i just noticed <laughs> okay so what happened here you can see there are way too many stars and the reason is we set those stars up um, while having the clipping set to 500, uh, to 100. But now with 500, of course, way more stars are within the renderable, renderable range. So we have to set up back to, let's say, 200. You can see that starts to look reasonable. Um, yeah, so once again, F12. You see now it's much faster. But still, the stars are way too big. I think there are also too many now and it doesn't look too good so let's go once, back, once again back let's set the size to 0 0.05 maybe 
100 separation, something bigger, like just around there, I'd say. Um, let's try this once again. And they are gone. Here we go. Yeah, uh, the size was too small. Um, okay, now we, here we've got a few stars. They're t still too big, in my opinion. 0.15, maybe. Uh, now they're no longer enough for them. Yeah, maybe we should also render this with a higher um, resolution, 100%. Yeah, you can see now you can actually see the stars because yeah, they're big enough. And actually, that's how you can set up um, a fast and quite good-looking star sky. Actually, we might just put that to be pitch black. And one other thing to notice that they're actually not, not really bright enough, in my opinion, okay? But to increase the brightness, it would be best to use the compositor. And as I said before, we're going to talk about the compositor um, later, but it is very cool. Yeah, so this is our scene. Um, of course, the lighting doesn't match at all. Let's just try and change that. Um, let's just... Actually, let's just delete this lamp. Let's go to environment lighting. Let's set the color to sky color. And let's set this to just to a darkish blue. Something like... Or even a slight violet. Whatever you call that. Um, like this. Let's see how that looks. And the energy is like 0.1. Okay, that's, that's that's too dark. Point. Let's go with one for now. Yeah, that's look. That looks better. Okay, so now it actually fits. Um, the problem now is that the horizon color is not dark enough. So let's just push it all the way down to let's say there. Of course, now the scene is too dark. So let's go with an energy value of five. Yeah, you can see uh, you can play around with those with those settings, but now we have more or less like a night atmosphere going on with all the stars. Of course, it's unrealistic that there are stars over here, but you know what I mean. So uh, yeah, that's kind of the mist and the star feature. Um, this is probably like the shortest tutorial ever. Um, but yeah, now we've kind of got that covered as well. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. Um, if you have any questions or comments or whatever please post it in the comments. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching and see you next time.